مشخصا برای زنان افغانستان دوری طالب بوده. Those who broke the law were heavily punished. have found a safe haven and a training ground to prepare their attack on America. I don't know if I knew the news exactly on 11 or 12th, because uh, there were no national TV during the Taliban time because they think pictures are haram. First time I heard the name of Osama bin Laden after 9-11. Oh, Osama bin Laden? Who's he? He's some guy that Americans is looking after. Okay, what, what, what the Taliban will may do? Osama bin Laden remains the prime suspect and remains as yet untouchable inside Afghanistan. People, they thought the United States of America will come and they will maybe use their nuclear power and they will destroy the entire country, like Hiroshima, like Nagasaki, like other places. We say, we all will die in once, and we don't need to cry, and we may not miss each other. We've been exhausting from war and war and violence and violence. So we thought that's maybe the end of the Afghanistan. Tonight, the United States of America makes the following demands on the Taliban. Deliver to United States authorities all the leaders of Al-Qaeda who hide in your land. Every nation in every region now has a decision to make. Either you are with us or you are with the terrorists. Uh, <laughs> حکومت طالبا هیچ کسی ایرا قبول نداشت که اسامه بن لادن به امریکا حواله شوا In the first place we do not have extradition treaties with any country Secondly we have to say that before anybody is extradited or punished there has to be something against him, something which is proved. And so far, we have no proof against bin Laden. There were moments very, very difficult for me, for everyone who was there. The Taliban, some of them, have said that we have to castigate the Americans. Algunos otros han dicho que no, esto, es, esto no se hace si Bin Laden está detrás de esto, pues esto no se hace. Y nosotros no tenemos por qué aguantar las consecuencias de lo que está haciendo Bin Laden. Entonces ha sido una decisión muy difícil, pero recurrieron a recomendarle a Osama Bin Laden para evitar una guerra contra Afganistán salir del país. O sea, una recomendación, no obligación. Y así fue, pero claro, Bin Laden no tenía dónde ir. Y ya sabes, los afganos ya estaban entre la espada y la pared. I can hear you, the rest of the world hears you, and the people... And the people who knocked these buildings down 
we'll hear all of us soon. The drum beats for invading Afghanistan were very loud. Then I start getting calls from Afghans. The Taliban would like to talk to you. Would you call this satellite number? I said, OK, who am I calling? And it was uh, Mutawakil. Uh, the foreign minister of the, of the Taliban and his interpreter at the time. And they said, Mr. Milt, this is important. Osama bin Laden is no longer under our protection. And we will say it again, that man is no longer under our protection. Just go get him. I called the White House and the White House said, well, that's a nice start. And I thought, you guys want to invade A and B. You don't know where Bin Laden is. On my orders, the United States military has begun strikes against Al Qaeda terrorist training camps and military installations of the Taliban regime in Afghanistan. Well, the sound of B-52 was like a nightmare. During the Taliban, at least, big cities was in a very safe environment. So people forgot the sounds of, let's say, um, guns and war machines. So, and again, it starts. سكان الحي أصابهم الرعب. فبينما هم منهمكون في استخراج الجثث من بين الأنقاض هاجمتهم الطائرات الأمريكية مرتين ولم يعودوا يعرفون هل يتابعون العمل أم يختبئون اتقاء للقصف Less than a month after the attack on the World Trade Center, U.S. and British special forces were flown in to hunt for bin Laden and topple the Taliban regime which had protected him. Osama bin Laden managed to escape, but before disappearing, he gave one last interview. I was looking for an Afghanistan interview with bin Laden. De repente viene el guardia de la oficina me dice que hay, hay algunos árabes en la puerta que quieren hablar contigo. Yo presentí algo, ¿no? Digo que algo, <ríe> algo gordo se está pasando. Me han pedido de subir en el coche, en el coche me han dicho que sentimos mucho tener que cachearte. Me quitaron el vendaje y me encontré enfrente de Bin Laden. Nosotros estábamos sentados y las explosiones y el bombardeo estaba en marcha, ¿no? Y le dije, ¿usted no tiene algún remordimiento de causar tanta desgracia a este país pobre, a esta gente que ya ha pagado mucho por las guerras desde hace 40 años? Dijo que no. Esta guerra fue prevista antes. Él contaba con que nosotros derrocamos a la Unión Soviética con su ejército tan grande y su crueldad y su máquina de guerra. Y cree, él cree que es capaz de derrocar a los americanos. Western troops needed local help to move faster on the ground. So they reached out to their old allies, former Mujahideen commanders who had fought against the Soviets in the 80s and had been defeated by the Taliban in the Civil War, the so-called Northern Alliance. 
The commanders accepted the offer. At once, they could take their revenge and return to power. Within weeks, the Northern Alliance managed to get closer to Kabul. Everybody wanted to go, and at least all the people I knew wanted to go. But clearly, the initial response was going to be done by some special operating forces. We were uh, cheering on, but everybody in their heart of hearts that wasn't there was disappointed that they weren't going to be a part of that. At the very beginning, we expected this long, painful fight like the Soviets had had. But some airstrikes, some different things, and the Taliban starts to collapse. Yani, ma az drone was be pinjaudi America was how much is high? Shan bcr meters see them. How much kalan high Taliban? The khatari kalan bodan. Khoda hafizi kar az guftim ki diga har kas. چه کاری خود میکنه باز یک وقت بعد چه یکی داره و چه و چه رقابت جور میکنیم ما هم رفتم طرف پاکستان اونجا توپنشای خود را کشیدم اونجا یک جای پرتاو کردیم و دستار خود را خلاص کردیم فوجی های پاکستانی که پرسان کرد که شما کی هستی کجا میری گفتم که ما در این کلینیک مهاجرین کار میکنم دکتر هستم خانه ما در چمان است از حالی دو فنتنار دیر از طالبان ساتی پاکستان اتیا اتروس پایسیس پرو اسلامی وریه دیر از طالبان است سی دی سلویرون دنترو دی لسوثیداد افغانه و سه که تو نو پودیس دیستنگیر سی است امبر از طالبان و نو طالبان و اترو طالبان و نو طالبان نو نو سابس پرکه لا روپا اسلامیسما و لسپکتو از المیسما We were a little concerned, more than a little, that Al-Qaeda didn't seem to have been rounded up and destroyed. They seemed to have slipped away. But if you separate Al-Qaeda now, Afghanistan, you've got the collapsed Taliban regime, and you go, well, okay, well, maybe that's it. Now, everybody was pulling out books on history and trying to read up on, you know, background of Afghanistan, but there was very little understanding or appreciation for what really, not just the Soviet war, but what the civil war in the 90s had done to the political structure, who was running things, the rise of the warlords. There was very little appreciation that this was a very strange, corrupted society, and anything we do to touch it is going to, uh, is going to be different. In November 2001, the Taliban regime dissolved, and the commanders could enter the capital, Kabul. It seemed the beginning of a new era, an era of hope. It was such a wonderful time. Oh, oxygen. I can breathe. Now it's a different Afghanistan. We realize Americans are not there to kill us. They are just looking after Taliban. Oh, wonderful. تولد شده بودم وقتی کچادری رو او طرف کده بودم از سرخان 
و مثل ما به ازارها ازار زن روز بود که تولد شده بوده به خاطر که دگه شلاق نمی خوردن به خاطر که دگه امید بر دوباره وظیفه رفتن پیدا شده بود بر از این احساس میکنن پس به مکتب میره به ماموریت میره به شفاخانه میره و دگه کار میکنن نان میاره The people start the generator and the motor of the society to move. And the flood of the refugees and the Afghans, diaspora from other countries was just... Uh, Kabul was like growing up and being, expanding the size. Over three million Afghans had fled since the 70s. Many of these refugees lived in Pakistan and were finally free to return home. Politicians and diplomats convened in Bonn to help Afghanistan form a new government. They collect a bunch of people from across the world and they put them in a room and say, you have to decide who will be the interim uh, government head and who will be the deputies and who will be the ministers. So it's like a cake. Okay, guys, let's uh, come and share it and eat it and everything will be fantastic. The new government included Northern Alliance commanders who had defeated the Taliban, representatives of various ethnic groups, and historically, two women. On 5th of December, in early morning, my son called me and said that your Minister of Women's Affairs and your Vice President for President Karzai, Karzai became President, and I didn't know Karzai. Hamid Karzai. Hamid Karzai was chosen to lead a transition government, the son of a tribal leader and a member of the main ethnic group, the Pashtun. He was active against the Soviets first and the Taliban later. His task was to lead Afghanistan to unity and peace. This new position which they gave to me, Ministry of Women's Affairs, this one doesn't exist before in Afghanistan, so the other ministries at least has a destroyed building, or at least there's a piece of land belong to that ministry. For uh, Ministry of Women's Affairs, there's nothing. So I don't know where I'm going to stay. After years of chaos and oppression, a fragile democracy came to Afghanistan. A new constitution was drafted. Millions of men and women were given the right to vote. I struggled a lot for the Constitution. It was a very tough journey I had. I left my daughter. I was not on her first birthday. A little child. I was away from home for a couple of months, just for the sake of Afghan. I collected their ideas and coming back and drafting the Constitution. I believe Afghanistan needs 